like smoking your brisket fat cap up or down? Well, it doesn't matter when your brisket is constantly spinning on a rotisserie. Could this be the easiest way to get perfect, juicy, evenly cooked brisket on an offset smoker every time? We're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Steve Gow here, and in this video, I'm doing a pretty crazy experiment, but not my craziest one. In a previous video, I put a brisket on a rotating grate in my offset smoker, and it produced one of the most evenly cooked and juiciest briskets I've ever had. Now, I think that's because the point and the flat were constantly swapping locations towards the fire and that helped it cook more evenly. But some of you guys in the comments thought that this rotating disc setup was a little bit too impractical. So you said, hey Steve, why not try a regular rotisserie brisket? So because I love you guys, that's what I'm doing. My rotisserie isn't long enough to go all the way through the smoker from stack to firebox end. So I need something to hold the other end in the middle of the smoker. And to do that, I'm getting down and dirty with my MIG welder and welding a little holder ring on the grate for the end of the rotisserie to stick into. By the way, I haven't updated you guys on my smoker build in a while. I've got one section of the main body welded and when it's done there'll be another section that bolts into it and I'll also be able to bolt on different styles of fireboxes and stack ends. So it's gonna be kind of like a modular test smoker and that way I can roll smaller parts around my studio and out into my backyard and I can assemble them together depending on what experiments I'm doing that day. Okay back to the rotisserie build. I'm drilling a hole in the stack end of the smoker for the other end of the rotisserie to stick into the motor. Then I inserted the rotisserie and turned it on to see if it will work. But before we get to that, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Zbiotics. We all have busy lives these days and we can't afford to waste a day stuck on the couch because of a few drinks the night before. Zbiotics is the answer we've all been looking for. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Personally, when I take Zbiotics, I feel a bit more normal the next day, which is important to me as a busy dad of two little boys. I gotta get stuff done, and Zbiotics helps me do that. So this holiday season, give your family and friends the gift of a better tomorrow with Zbiotics. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use smoke trails BBQ at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee so if you're unsatisfied for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com forward slash smoke trails BBQ and use code smoke trails BBQ at checkout for 15% off. Thank you Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. And back to the rotisserie, I switched it on and it worked like a champ. But the real question is, will it hold a 12 pound brisket or is this gonna be a fail video? We'll find out soon. So I trimmed this Costco choice grade brisket down to around 12 pounds. It's decently marbled, but I find sometimes when I'm shopping at Costco, I'll get something closer to a select grade or something in between, or sometimes I win the lottery and I get marbling that's closer to prime grade. It's kind of a gamble, but they're the cheapest and best quality briskets I can get up here in the great white north. I know a lot of you guys in Texas can get prime grade brisket for like five bucks a pound or less. And I'd have to mortgage my house or something to get that quality of brisket. So I'm working with what I have here. Now I'm slathering it with, and I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation, but here it goes, Datu Puti Toyamansi, which is a Filipino soy sauce with calamansi juice added to it. That's kind of like a Filipino lime. So it's salty, it's umami, it's citrusy. So I thought I'd try it out to add a little pop of flavor to this brisket. I just grabbed it randomly from the Asian food store. So it could be made of fermented horse <laughs> for all I know. It's tasty, but you guys don't have to use everything that I use in these videos but it is tasty. Now for the rub, I'm using Smoke Trails BBQ Brisket Rub. I worked on this rub for a really long time and it's my brisket secret ingredient. It has a variety of salt and pepper granule sizes for maximum texture. It has ground sumac berries, which darken up the bark like crazy and provide a bit of an acidic tang. It has a little hint of grilled meat flavoring, which you would normally only get if you did something like burning fat in the firebox of your smoker, but this rub already has that flavor in it. And it's got some other ingredients that go great with brisket, including MSG. Now, for those of you that have already purchased it, thank you very much. Just remember to go very heavy with this rub. It's designed to go on heavy. Don't just salt bay it on and sprinkle a little bit on. You gotta go heavy with this stuff for maximum texture. All right, now I'm penetrating the brisket with this rotisserie skewer, and this is really important. Don't make the same mistake I did here. You need to really get it in the center of mass so it's weighted equally and it spins with equal weight. I did a pretty terrible job at this and it was kind of lopsided. Now, according to the box of this rotisserie that I bought for $15 at my local thrift store, 
before. There's this little weight thing that you can adjust that prevents it from getting lopsided, but unfortunately, that is the thing that I welded to the grate. So, oh well, hopefully it works. Now, while the brisket soaks up the rub on the counter, I'm lighting up my smoker with my patented Smoke Trails BBQ method, where I just randomly chuck in a bunch of splits and charcoal, and I propane torch it until it's lit. And 30 minutes later, I'm setting the brisket up on the smoker, and lo and behold, it actually works. I'll speed it up a bit so you guys can see it spin better here. Now, it's a bit lopsided, like I said before, so the motor is struggling a little bit at certain points of the rotation, but it's working, so I'm not messing with it. Maybe it'll fall off in the middle of the cook, but fingers and toes crossed. This is very much a Steve Gow take imperfect action video. I just came up with it this morning and executed on it in about an hour, welded it together and it's working. That's what I usually do in my videos. I just try to spend the least amount of time developing a proof of concept and if it works and it has some good results, then I'll spend more time and I'll build on it. Now, a couple hours later into the cook, running at around 250 degrees Fahrenheit, it looks like this, pretty decent. The bark is setting up a little bit and drying out, but one thing I noticed is that a lot of the rub is kind of falling off because the meat is turning constantly and it's flexing. So, so maybe if I did this again, I might use a mustard binder to help the rub stick on a lot better, but enough of the rub is staying on the brisket, so I'm not too concerned. And at this point, I'm starting to spritz every hour or so just to add some additional flavor, and for that, I'm using the Dato Puti mixed with 50-50 water. A couple more hours in, it looks like this, and it's temping at around 140 degrees Fahrenheit and starting to sweat out some moisture. So I'm giving it one last spritz and bumping temps up to around 275 to 300 for the rest of the cook to render the fat cap and speed up the cook. I know that looks like a pretty crazy big fire, but it's just because I had the cook chamber open. It'll settle down when everything is closed down. And 10 hours later, the brisket looks like this, kind of cool looking, and it's temping at around 190 everywhere I probe. Interestingly, the bottom didn't really darken up that much. I have some theories about that, but your guess is really as good as mine at this point. And now that it's at 190, I really awkwardly removed it from the rotisserie off camera, and I'm placing it onto some foil with clarified butter and tallow, and I'm also adding some more Datto Puti, because gotta have Datto Puti. And now I'm wrapping the brisket tightly in the foil and it's going into my holding oven at 150 degrees for the next 18 hours, at which point I will conduct the taste test. dad o makes me go woo hee All right guys, it's the next day and this brisket is out of the holding oven. It's looking pretty good. To slice this, I'm gonna be using my new Dalstrong Valhalla series slicer. This thing is crazy, look at that sword. It is sharp, it is sexy, it is cool. There's a link in the description for this below. It is long. Now I'm just gonna slice this baby right down the middle here. Boop, 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 boop. And let's take a look, woo! That is looking really tasty. Look at that, guys. Mm, 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 mm. Let's take a slice of the flat here. I'll just cut some burnt ends off of it. Big old chunk of burnt ends. And then I'll just start slicing one, two, three, and I'll go four in here. Nice, big, thick slice of the point. I'm gonna pull this apart. It is pulling apart pretty tough, to be honest. Let's give it a taste. It's very tasty, it's beefy, it's got some decent fat cap rendering. If you look here, it's got that squishy fat cap. It could be a little bit well rendered, but what happened last night is I took it off a little bit lower in temperature, maybe around 185 than where I normally take it. I usually go up to 190, 195 first, because I had to meet my brother for a scotch tasting downtown and I had to get out of the house, so I kind of wrapped it a little bit earlier. But if I kept going up to 190, 195, I think this brisket would have been really good. That being said, let's take a look at the flat here. I mean, we're getting into the point and the flat right in the middle of the brisket. I'll just do a couple of slices into the flat. So there's a flat slice, no tallow on it. Let's see if the flat pulls apart. I mean, it pulls apart a lot easier than the point actually. Pull that apart pretty decently. Let's give it a taste. It's good, and I think because I didn't take it to a high temperature before I put it in the holding oven and I held it at a low temperature for a really long time, it has kind of more of a beefy prime ribby flavor. But the downside of that is that it has less collagen rendering. So it is really good, it's really juicy, but it doesn't have that luxurious collagen rendering that's like jelly in your mouth, but it's still quite good. Okay, now let's do the very tip of the flat. I mean, this is gonna be the driest part. So there is the very tip of the flat. You can see that it's kind of beef jerky-ish, so it's kind of dried out, but let's see how it tastes. 
Not bad, but still kind of dry and jerky like in texture. Not the worst very tip of the flat that I've ever had, but still kind of dry. In terms of flavor though, it's really good. I think the Datto Pudi stuff that I added added a lot of citrus flavor. It added a lot of umami. So I definitely think that's a good addition. And I like saying Datto Pudi. Oh yeah, it's tasty. Mm. It is tasty. Woo. But the big question is, does this rotisserie method produce a better brisket that's more evenly cooked and more juicy? I would say no. Because of the way it's set up, the point is still always exposed to the fire. And if you have improper fire management that is going to dry out the flat, you're still going to get that problem with this rotisserie method and the rotating isn't really going to help it that much. I still had a pretty dry flat. Maybe that's because it's getting into winter here and it's super dry where I'm from up here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's cold, it's dry. There's not a lot of moisture in the air. Maybe I ran the fire too hot and the rotisserie didn't really help that out. And in terms of the rendering of the point and the thicker part of the flat, I think I could have taken it a little bit higher, maybe up to 195 given it some more time at that higher temperature and then held it and then it would have been perfect. But in this case, the rendering wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be. The plus side is though, when you don't get that great rendering because you take it off at a lower temperature, you do get really juicy brisket that's really prime ribby and beefy in flavor. So it is kind of a trade-off. So thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any ideas for other Smoke Trails barbecue experiments, let me know in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video and until then, happy smoking.